Each one of these small dots you see here represents a small spider that hatched while we were gone for Christmas vacation. In our defense, we didn't know that our Christmas tree came preloaded with arachnids. So to find out what we did in our dire situation and how we ended up in this situation to begin with, we're going to have to go back in time about four weeks to the day after Thanksgiving. It was the day after Thanksgiving and we had just finished the leftovers of our Thanksgiving meal when we decided to go get our Christmas tree. In years past, when we lived high up in the mountains of Western North Carolina, getting a tree was always a fun adventure. There was always tons of snow on the ground and oftentimes it was hard to actually see the trees because they were buried under several inches or sometimes feet of snow. In fact, this is a picture of one of the first times where we actually went to the mountains to get the Christmas tree. And this is another one where you can clearly see there is tons of snow on the ground. I bring up the weather because it plays a key point to our story that I'll get to in just a second. A few years ago, we moved from the mountains of North Carolina to the flatlands of South Carolina, but we still managed to return back to Blowing Rock every year to get a Christmas tree. This year, however, things got a little bit busy, we didn't have a lot of time, so I googled local Christmas tree farms in our area. And I was actually quite surprised to find a few that were actually pretty close to where we're living. But as you can see by looking at the pictures, lots of snow, no snow. Super cold, not very cold. In fact, by the end of it, when my son was meeting Santa Claus at the Christmas tree farm, he was actually already taking off his jacket because he was getting so hot. And I'm still not really sure why the monkey made it to the Christmas tree farm. So therein lies the key difference. I imagine spiders prefer warm weather much more than cold weather. Christmas tree shopping in Boone, North Carolina? Cold. Christmas tree shopping in South Carolina? Hot. So unbeknownst to us, we likely had a spider sack or two hanging in the branches of the Christmas tree we purchased. And I probably should have been suspicious as there were literally no other Christmas trees around except for this one. That should have been a red flag because everybody else was smart enough to avoid it. Are you stupid or something? Ultimately, however, we wouldn't notice the ticking time bomb we were bringing into our house. In fact, if you saw last week's video, we used it for a science experiment, decorated it like normal, and we thought everything was fine. We went on vacation and had no idea that hundreds of spiders were literally hatching while we were gone and totally beginning to dominate our Christmas tree. More importantly, I should say these were incredibly small spiders and they might actually be spider mites. I'm not expert enough to know the difference, but if you do, leave me a message in the comments because I would really like to know. So like any reasonable person, when put in this ridiculous situation, I told everybody that I know and pretty much got the same three suggestions as to how to handle it. The most common response I got was, I would burn that Christmas tree to the ground. Which I get it, it's a knee-jerk response. I'm not setting fire to my Christmas tree, especially inside the home. My tree. So what's the, matter with you? the first reasonable response that I got that kind of made some sense was, I would just take that tree outside, cut my losses and start over. And I get it, and it's not a bad idea, but taking this tree outside requires me hugging the Christmas tree, picking it up, and physically taking it outside while hundreds of spiders are on the tree and would probably start to crawl all over me. And if you saw our video over the summer where we actually talked about spiders and how their eyes reflect green light while human eyes reflect red light, that is a crazy coincidence that we did a story on spiders and now we have a spider problem. You know the spiders and me aren't terribly close. No, thank you. So hugging a tree full of spiders and taking it outside myself also wasn't something I was going to do. The third most common response I received was I would just spray some insecticide on it. And I get it, it makes sense, but spraying a highly flammable substance over our Christmas tree didn't really seem like a good idea either. So I did like any self-respecting parent would do. I told my kids to fix the problem. And because I'm lucky and my kids are totally gangster, they were absolutely down with that plan. And in one of the more ridiculous coincidences of the year, my son was already dressed as Spider-Man, so all he had to do was put on his D'Artagnan hat, grab a few exterminator sticks, and he was good to go. And speaking of sticks, that's actually what we use to get rid of the spiders. We are never without an abundance of sticks because my wife and daughter use them frequently as they help rehabilitate some of the animals that are given to them. But getting back to the sticks, you can see what we did was take them up to the Christmas tree and use them to kind of roll up the spider webs all at once and then just take them outside and throw them back into the woods. The process was actually pretty simple and worked pretty well. Did we get all the spiders? Probably not. Will the spiders be dead in a few days anyway because we don't have a lot of insect food in the house? I'm hoping so. It only took a few sticks and several rounds of rolling them up as much as possible to get most of the spiders easily off the tree and back into the woods where they belong. 
So that is our Christmas time spider chaos story. If you buy a live Christmas tree in a warm weather climate, you might want to double check those branches to make sure you don't have any hidden creatures trying to make their way into your home. So with that being said, Merry Christmas everyone, Happy Holidays. Our regular science videos will resume early next year. Happy New Year everybody, and we'll see you then. Thank you.